So I've pushed both projects up to GitHub, so they are now there separately. One as server and one as client, so you can find both of them here. If you need them, here's the client, there's the server. Everything is pushed up. You would obviously have to add your own database connection if you're using the server app. All right, so our next step is we need to start building out the service to call our API. And then the service is gonna get a JSON object back, which we can hand to the component, which the component can send to the HTML. And then we can use a loop in HTML to display our artist, something like this. We'll, we'll just start with the artist name. So we're gonna start with the service and kind of work our way forward. Service, component, HTML. <coughs> So we'll go back to our Angular client. So again, I'll use my second terminal window because in my first terminal window, the app is running. So in my second one, what we want to do inside our client is run ng generate service. I'll also call it artist. Um, so it's same as the component, we're just substituting the word keyword component, we're substituting the, the word service for the word component. So ng generate service artist. So it then creates artist.service, it creates a TypeScript file. There's no HTML, this is code only. I will put it in the chat as well. So go ahead and create that artist service. We can open it up. And we'll notice a few things about it. It's got this dependency injectable and we will need to inject our service into the component. So our component much like our in our um, ASP.NET controllers, they took a, they had a dependency. They required a database connection. Our Angular, our artist component is going to require an instance of the service. Okay, so we'll work first in our service, and then we'll connect it to our component. We need to add a couple of dependencies here. Um, we need to. HTTP refs to make calls to server API via HTTP. So we're going to import, for starters, we'll just import the HTTP client. We'll need to make another reference for doing post requests, but right now we only have one method in our API. It's a get method. So we're going to use this HTTP client. Um, we'll start here. Now we could, for the moment, just to get this working, first of all, we'll hard code in the URL to our API. Later on, we're going to want to move that into a configuration file, much like we have our in our server backend, we got our database connection in a configuration file. So Angular already has files for this under environments, but to keep it simple, we'll do this one step at a time. Now, our constructor of our service, it's going to require this HTTP client dependency because our service needs to make HTTP calls. So we'll define a variable called HTTP that's of type HTTP client. So service instances require HTTP client dependency, right? Because this, this the whole point of this service is to make calls to our API. It can't do that without this HTTP client dependency. Now we'll write a get method. 
So we we'll have a method called get artists. So this method is going to make an HTTP call to our API. So we are going to return this.http. And you can see it's got the different HTTP methods here. Dot get. So the parameter is what is this method's got a whole lot of overloads. So we're going to provide, again, I'll hard code the URL right now. We'll modify the domain in a little bit. So it comes from a configuration file, right? So we're going to make a GET request to the end point in our server. Right, where we want to hit this URL. And we simply want to return whatever comes out of that method, so the JSON response that we get. Now, so there's our service for now. We'll, we'll modify it after. Again, we're going to make this domain a variable that we read from our environment. We're going to add additional methods here for create, read, update, and delete. But for now, we're just for, for create, update, and delete. Right now, we just want to read the data. So we now need to configure the usage of our service in two different spots here one globally in our app.module, and then also within our artist component, our artist component needs to use the service. So this service is kind of like the bridge, it's the interface, the component, it doesn't talk directly to our server API. The service performs that communication. It's the, so the service is like our bridge between our client front end and our server backend. So I'm going to go back to app.module.ts. We need to import the service. And we also are going to add it in the list of providers. What is a provider? Well, it's a set of injectable objects or dependencies. And so that's exactly what we're doing here. This service is injectable. We can hand it to the component so the component can use it for interacting with our backend. So we're going to add that. We're going to declare the service up on line seven. And we're going to list it as a provider in app.module.ts. So now we can go to our component, we can import the service. We can add an instance of the service in our constructor of our component. And then we should be able to invoke the get artist method from the service and subscribe or listen for those results to those results. If you need me to go over any of this again, just please stop me or if you're confused or behind, let me know. So make sure we've added, imported it, and listed as a provider in app.module. And here's our very basic service. We've only added three lines of code here, four lines, the import, the constructor dependency, and our simple get method. Okay, so now we'll go back to our component. We need to import our service. Maybe make a comment above this service that interfaces with server API. And we are going to provide an instance of our service in the constructor.
So whenever our component gets created, we need an instance of this service. We can now write a method here also called get artists. So then we can call this dot service. And now we've got access to the get method of our service, right? There's no parameters in get artist. We're just fetching everything. And now we're using an observable. It is an asynchronous call. So we are going to subscribe to that response. It's basically like our callback in our express controller. So we are hoping to get back artists. Now what happens? In this case, we need a local variable in our component that we can assign or populate with that resulting JSON data. So we're gonna fetch the data that comes back and assign it to a local array called artists. Now we haven't declared it, So inside of my class, we'll declare we'll just declare an artist property. So we're calling the service, we're fetching the data, and then we're going to store it in a local variable called artists. So we should be able to go to our HTML file now and use an ng4 directive to loop through the artists and display them. So we should be able to use some bootstrap and an unordered list with list item tags to display our list here. So now we can go back to our artist component.html and underneath our first h2, we'll leave bootstrap out for now. Let's just say, if, see if we can display just with simple ul and a li tag. So we'll add an li with ng4 let artist of artists. And in here, we will just display artist.name. So we should get a very simple, hopefully we'll get a very simple bulleted list where we are looping through this artist variable we declared in our component here on line 12. We're populating it inside our get method from the results of calling our service, when our service calls our backend API. So if all goes well, when I reload the page now, our artist data should show up. I've got seven or eight artist documents in my database now. So I'll go try it. And now we get a totally blank page, which isn't good. Right, even our headings and our gray box, our subheadings, our gray boxes are gone. So what happened here? Web developer tools, I will reload. And in my console, it tried to call our service But it says no provider for the HTTP client. So let's figure out 
what went wrong. Um, okay. One issue, one thing we missed in our app module.ts. I'm just going to stop my screen share for one second and just change the tone so that it won't go in and out. We do need to reference our HTTP client module in our app module. So this is one problem. Go back to app module.ts. So we need to import the HTTP client module here and add it to our list of imports. So we're going to add line eight and line 18. I'll save that change. Right, our service is using the HTTP client module, but it has to be declared at the project level as well. I don't expect this to fully work yet. I'll try it again. Okay, so we get no error. We also get no data. So not quite quite right. We'll make sure our server API, if I refresh it, right, server API is still running. So why didn't this fetch anything? Aha, if I look in the browser console, now I see the problem. Let's clear this out. So no error. Expected to get an error. <laughs> Let's go and look in our terminal. So it's not fetching anything. There is a reason for this. The reason why our service isn't fetching any data it's a permissions error. Can you think of any reason why we would get a permissions error? So why, I call the API locally here, runs fine. But when our service tries to call it, it just doesn't fetch anything. So we need to actually add something. Thank you, Adam. Our API, it's not going to allow, our API that runs on this domain, by default, it's not going to allow, allow requests that come in from, as Adam said, an outside destination. So we're going to go back to our server. And inside of the globals file, we're going to add a client server, which is a localhost 4200. Okay, so we're going to define this URL globally. And then we're going to have to add a bit of code in our controller to allow this. So 
So we'll save that. And then we'll go back to our artist controller. And then we're going to have to configure controller to allow cross origin requests from client app, which are blocked by default. So we're going to reference our config file. And we're going to set router.use so this runs for all methods in this controller. So we need to set the header to access-control-allow-origin. We have to set a few headers here. So our origin is our config.client server. So when we get requests, from our client server. We need to allow headers. And the headers we're going to allow our origin requested with content type and accept. And now we also want to define the methods that we're going to allow. So for example, if we wanted to limit this to get methods only, we could. But we are going to define the access control, allow methods. And our values here are going to be get, post, put, or updating, delete, and options, so that we could pass a JSON object as part of these. And actually, I've got one more parameter here after response, which is next. And now we're going to use the next parameter so that we just continue to call the next method. So this runs, this runs before any method in this controller. So for every request that comes in, we're allowing our client side app in, we're allowing these kinds of headers and these methods, and then we carry on to the next route in here. So I'm going to try this again now and see if this makes a difference in our front end now that we are allowing specifically allowing this domain access to our API. Let's see. Hmm, okay. It's not going yet. Let's see if we get any kind of error.
Okay, nothing in our console. We're almost there. We're missing something small. So we'll just review what we've done in our Angular app. So we're looping through our artists, displaying the name, looks okay. We've imported our service. Oh, haha. <laughs> Our get artist method is never being called. That's why. In our ng on init, whenever this service gets called, it should automatically run. Oops. So now whenever our service is initialized, it should go and make a call to the server to fetch the list of artists. There we go. I'm actually gonna just disable <laughs> those headers in the server to show you what happens without them. You don't have to do this in your project. I'm just gonna go back to the server. I'm just gonna comment this out for a moment. So without allowing these headers, okay, now I'm confused. <laughs> I didn't expect this to run without us allowing these. Okay, well, we'll just, we'll leave it for now. We may have to come back to that. I did not expect that result to be perfectly honest. Okay, so we can now fetch the artists in our client again in on init, make sure we're calling the service. So when our component is initialized, we automatically go and fetch. Now in our service, we've hard coded the URL here. So not the best practice to hard code the server domain. So instead we're gonna move that. To an environment variable. So in the client app, We've got an environments folder with two environment files. There's a production one. We're really concerned with this, the dev environment. So I'm going to open up environment.ts. So this file has a production flag set to false. We'll set up a few other variables here. Our environment name will be dev. And our API server will be localhost 3000. In our production environment, we would then point it to a, a live domain or subdomain. We'll do that in a couple of weeks when we look at how do we deploy this. We'll actually need to deploy two separate applications, the server and the client separately. Okay, so I've added the environment name of dev and the API server pointing to our domain. So now we can import this environment file into our service and we can make this a variable instead. So we're going to import 
the development environment file and then in here we can say API server which is a string is equal to our environment dot API server okay so now we've got this class level variable we're going to use it in all our methods so now I'm going to take out And we'll just depend on okay. So our service should still work, but we've moved that URL into our environment file rather than hard coding it into our JavaScript code. My service should still run. We don't see any anything different in the actual app. Now we can kind of improve our HTML formatting. We can see that our list works. Um, we can fix the formatting. We might also want to sort this data. So in our backend, in our server API, right now it's just showing the, the documents in the order they were inserted into the database. Probably be better to show these alphabetically so we could add a sort to our server. So we're going to go back to the get method of our server. So in the find before our callback, we could actually add sorting in here. So first I'll add just an empty object, then a null, and then we can add sort name as a JSON object. So these are options. So the first, we're not filtering on, on anything, but we are adding to our query sorting by name. So now our artist should appear alphabetically. That worked well. What happened? Artist name is not defined. That's interesting. Looks like it's defined right here. Oh, sorry, that has to be a string. There we go. So now they're sorted alphabetically by artist name. Okay. Now I think we're getting our cross origin error. Yes, okay. I guess it was cap my Angular app was cached. So our cross origin request was blocked. Same origin policies disallows reading the reading the remote resource. So the core's header access control allow origin is missing. So we'll need to put that code back into our server controller in order to let our client app in now. To be honest with you, I'm surprised it ever worked. So if we uncomment this router.use, and save, Okay, now we get our artists in alphabetical order. 
So I guess it was cached. I was surprised it ever worked, to be honest with you. Now we can play with the formatting. Now that we've got the data, we've done the hard part. Right? So we really have three get methods. Like I said, there's lots of layers. We've got our get method in the server backend, talks to the database. We've got our service in the client end with a get method that calls get on the server. And then we've got our component that calls get and populates a local variable. So now if we want to, we can do a little more with the HTML here. Now that we're, we're getting the data we want in the order we want. I'll add a few classes here. On my UL, we'll use the list group class. This will put a box around each artist. And in the LI, give it a class of list group item. So when we do this, we now get like a border. We could also display the albums underneath as a separate list. So I'm going to maybe wrap this. I'll put an H5 around the artist's name. And then within each artist, we can have a nested list group with another loop. We can say let album of artist dot albums. And now we can display maybe the album dot title. And the year. So now we should have a list within a list. So where we have artists where we saved albums to the database, those albums now show up as well. I will do a quick upload to GitHub on both of these in case you're having any issues. I recognize it's getting complicated. <laughs> to display artists. Did that not work? Oh, because I did not add my files. I'll do the same with the server backend. I will push. Do you have albums, album data in your database, Adam? Um, okay, so you do for multiple artists. All right, maybe compare 
to what's here. So, yeah, I mean, my Angular doesn't recognize this album's attribute. But make sure, check your carefully that it's artist.albums inside that loop. Okay. So maybe just a typo. Right. Because albums is plural. All right, so what we want to start working on next, I think what we'll, we'll do today is we now want to start working on being able to add an artist, create a form over here on the details, and as soon as we save it, it will automatically save to the database and reload our list, but our page isn't going to have to do any kind of refresh. There's no redirect or no refresh. So we'll start setting up our form over here and then we'll be, we're almost due for a break. So then when we come back, we will have to write the post method in our API, as well as the add artist method in our serve Angular service and Angular component. But we'll just start maybe by setting up the HTML form that we're gonna need. So we can now go down, jump down near the bottom of our HTML file. So underneath the details, we can create form tag. And I'll create a field set. It's a little bit of a margin. We'll put on a label. And an input name equals name, ID equals name, we'll say it's required. And then we'll just put a button on underneath, a save button. Let's just save. So a simple form, form tag, field set, label input, and button. Let's see how that looks. I think maybe I wanna move my button over here. So I'll add a little offset to it. So it's moved over. So I'll add a set two. So it kind of floats under here. Okay, so I mean, this isn't functional yet. It's nothing. Basically just reloads our page right now. So I think this is a good place for us to take a break. So we will write the code across those three levels, server API, Angular service, Angular component, and then interacting with this button. So when we click save, it will run a post method and send that new artist ultimately into MongoDB, where we can also have it appearing in our list. And so let's take a break. We will come back at one o'clock. And we'll get that functionality working before we stop for the weekend. Okay. We will be back in 10.